Thank you for checking out Lakehead International's videos. You're about to watch one of our Lakehead International live webinars, a fun and informative way to learn more about Lakehead while also meeting faculty, staff, and current students. If you have any questions throughout today's video, please comment below. Otherwise, let's get started. On that note, folks, I want to officially welcome you to Lakehead University and chat a bit more about Lakehead on a global education scale and, of course, some of our most proud rankings and achievements. So for those of you who aren't familiar, Lakehead University is a public institution located here in Canada, more specifically in the province of Ontario. And we're very happy and proud to have two hometowns and campuses, one located in Aurelia, Ontario, and the other located in Thunder Bay, Ontario. On that note, and of course, uh, chatting a bit about Lakehead on a global education scale, I'd be remiss not to mention some of our most proud rankings. And that begins with the Times Higher Education uh, World University Rankings, which places Lakehead at the top as the top Canadian university under 10,000 students in the entire world. Uh, similarly, Times Higher Education has placed Lakehead in the top 100 in the entire world for their global impact rankings, which speak directly to the UN Sustainable Development Goals. And then chatting a bit about some of those uh, sustainable de development goals ties in nicely to our next ranking, which is our number one in Canada for not-for-profit research income. We are a highly uh, focused and research-driven institution. And then here in, in Canada on the national front, uh, we also rank quite highly among our Canadian institutions. And so we've consistently been in Canada's top 10 universities in our category, number one in Ontario in our category, and first in Ontario for student awards. With that being said, I want to chat a bit more about Lakehead here in Ontario. And with that being said, I want to chat about when you earn a degree from Lakehead, it's actually a degree that's been accredited by the Ontario government. So that has gone through rigorous processes to make sure that the degree you graduate with is going to be of high value and, of course, is relevant to today's world. Lakehead University is proud to offer degrees to over 8,500 students currently pursuing to 85 different uh, undergrad and grad programs. And those students join us from over 70 nations around the world. And of course, hopefully one day you will add to that number too. Uh, with that being said, another thing that we're really proud of is that all those students pursuing those programs get to participate in a unique experience. And that unique experience is our small class sizes. It really helps uh, drive strong education and, and connections between professors and students. Here in Thunder Bay, we have a 15 to 1 student uh, to professor ratio, and in Aurelia, it's 13 to 1. And then also to note, Lakehead is on top of both a research and inst research driven institution. We're also employment focused. And so we want to ensure that our grads are highly employable and our, our employment ranking being 97.7% of our grads are employed within two years is above the Ontario average, but also above the Canadian average. And uh, to do that, we also offer several cooperative education experiences through some of our programs. So that all ties into offerings uh, that make your experience better here at Lakehead University. On that note, I do want to dive a bit further into the academics, which is what we're here today to discuss. And here are our areas of study. So we have business administration, engineering, science and environmental studies, natural resources management, education, social sciences and humanities, health and behavioral sciences, law, medicine, and graduate studies. So we are a fully comprehensive university. Today, though, we are going to dive further into health and behavioral sciences and uh, it is my great pleasure to introduce our special guests from the Department of Psychology. I'll pass it over to Dr. Klein to introduce himself. Hi, thanks so much, Jordan. Uh, my name is Rupert Klein, and uh, just as Jordan said, I'm the chair and a professor of psychology of the psychology department. Uh, I've been here for 14 years, and I study usually personality and risk behavior, but uh, I'm here to help advise students and, and help them with their program and their curriculum from first year in psychology all the way to their PhD. Awesome. Well, thank you again for joining us, Dr. Klein. And next, I'll pass it over to uh, Taylor. Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. So my name is Taylor. I am the program coordinator for the psychology department. It's basically the department's own guidance counselor. So I offer a lot of student support and advising with appointments to talk about course sequence, programs, post-grad opportunities, career advising, all that sort of fun stuff if you just need a little support um, during your studies. So on that note, I'll transfer it over and we'll get into exactly what is psychology. Thanks, Taylor. I think this is absolutely the best time to get started in psychology. And, and I say this for a couple of reasons. And, and the primary one 
is that technology and all the advances that have gone on in medicine have made studying psychology so interesting, so fascinating compared to what it was even 10, 20 years ago. And, and the second reason is just because turning on the television, turning, uh, reading a newspaper, turning on a computer, you see psychology all around you. Uh, one in three Canadians say they struggle with mental health issues. There's a real need to understand mental health and, 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 and problems that are occur. And I think psychology at this, is at the perfect nexus at figuring out how do people think? How do they feel? What motivates them? And, and studying their behavior. And, and I think psychology, which is both the science and the profession of studying uh, how people think and influencing their thoughts, it, is perfect for this. And really, all these factors in terms of understanding addictions, understanding how to educate people, how to change people's um, uh, way of thinking and their attitudes, all of these are psychological concepts that you can study in your undergrad, undergraduate degree. And it sets you up perfectly for further careers down the road, whether it's in psychology or whether it's in law or whether it's in guidance counseling, uh, lots of different avenues you could take the skills that you learn from psychology. So I think this is a fascinating, fascinating time to get involved in psychology and there's lots of different topics you can take with it. Thanks, Dr. Klein. So basically your first year at Lakehead, it's we start you off with the bare bones, all you got to take in your first year in terms of psychology courses is introductory psychology. So that's going to cover everything. We're going to get more into that sort of nitty gritty later on. That's all you have to take. And this is just what we call a very foundational course. So this course will touch on everything, which can lead to further courses in foundations of neuroscience, child development, drugs and behavior, dis uh, psychological disorders, psychotherapy, the theory and history behind it. So even if you don't take psychology, I tell people, as long as you take psychology, psych 1100, I've done my job. So if you just take that, you get exposed to the whole field itself so you can sort of learn more about it. So I'll pass along to Jordan to go to the next slide. I'll get more into the nitty gritty about the program itself. So let's say you decide psychology is your major. We offer an arts and a science stream, which you can turn into a bachelor's or an honors bachelor of arts or a bachelor of science tour to an honors bachelor of science. Basically, no matter what art science or arts, the psychology course you take, all the psychology courses you take are exactly the same. The only difference is your electives. So this kind of involves some sort of critical reflective thinking about what did you like better in high school and what did you do well in and what did you enjoy? If you're more the biology, the chemistry, the, the sort of hard sciences, then I would recommend the bachelor's just the sciences route. If you liked more English, history, philosophy, visual arts, music, I'd recommend the art streams because those foundational electives can really help sort of further enhance your studies or add a new depth to it as well. So we'll go, we'll go to the sciences first. So again, you'll need Psych 1100, which is introductory psychology, and then two FCEs, which is full course equivalent in either courses in biology, chemistry, computer science, geography, math, or physics. You can choose from any of those slides there, whichever is preferred as well and what you took in high school. You're gonna need a credit in either the social sciences and humanities. Type A and type B is LU language for how we classify courses. So for the humanities, or type A, that's more like English, philosophy, history, French, other languages. Type B, social sciences is more like gender studies, political science, sociology, sort of those as well. And then you need another elective in type C or type D courses. Type C and type C is more like engineering, mathematics, natural sciences. So something like environmental studies or mathematics themselves. Type D is health and behavioral sciences. Sometimes they exclude social work and psychology. So there's other courses like gerontology that will count as well and we also have courses in like kinesiology or some nursing electives as well that could translate there as well as for the arts sort of you get a little bit more of freedom to pick from the social science and humanities you can take some type c and type d courses but you want to also with lakehead every student has to take a type e course which is a half credit in indigenous content requirement it's sort of calendared in into the second year of the program but if you find it a course such as studying sociology of the north you can take that in your first year and that can count towards the type E requirement as well. All right, next slide, please, Jordan. Okay, so again, psychology itself is a very broad field. You're gonna under you're gonna learn all the five core areas: biological, cognitive affective, social, developmental, developmental, and individual basis of behavior. You're gonna learn about research methods and statistics. Research methods is mandatory for all programs. Statistics is more so if you want to pursue the honors route. So this is going to tell you how to actually like apply your knowledge in psychology and conduct ethical research within the community for literature and learn how to do a literature review, conduct a really good research question, 
learn different variables in that. And so you can sort of have a applicable study to psychology. And then all that's said and done in your second year, you're going to hit all the courses we touched on earlier, such as neuroscience, cognition, social psychology, child or adult development. And uh, I feel like I'm missing one, but it's not here right now. So with that said, you're going to touch on everything with psychology. And then from there, you can really cater your degree for what you want it to be. So this is the examples I use. Let's say you, you're in second year and you really like neuroscience. You can take more upper year courses, such as like principles of psychopharmacology, behavioral neuroscience, perception and processes. So you can really make your degree like, we don't have a designated neuroscience focus, but you could make it that as well. And then the same goes for the polar opposite. If neuroscience just wasn't your thing, you don't have to touch it after foundations of neuroscience. We offer flexibility in the program where you can explore other avenues as well. And that's something I can come in with as well. With being a student in psych, there's a lot of courses, there's a lot of areas of research. So it can be overwhelming, but that's where my contact is good. To, we can come in, sit in my office, and we can just discuss your strengths, where you want to go, and I can sort of help you along the program sequences as well. So you have a lot of flexibility, but you have a lot of guidance as well with me. We have great graduate assistants um, who are pursuing their master's and doctors in psychology, so they love this stuff. So they're great resources as well. So you've got a lot of support here if you decide to study psychology at Lakehead. Great. Thank you. Uh, one of the things I think that's great about Lakehead in particular, because you can get a psychology degree at any university, but what makes us special is the opportunity to get involved right from day one. So starting off in our introductory psychology, we have four dedicated graduate students to help assist with this, this course. We also have opportunity to get involved, getting hands-on experience in psychology. So starting off in your first year, you can get involved in psychology studies by, we have variety of different kinds of research labs from studies on uh, eyesight and others on hormones and some are on just social influences and, and personality and so you can get involved as a research participant <clears throat> starting in in the first year you can get actually bonus points added to your grade by being involved in studies in second year we have some of our, our challenging courses like research methodology and statistics which again take a, a different perspective now rather than being the guinea pig in these studies and seeing how surveys are done and how psychological studies are done now you're being involved in terms of how to analyze data and see how these studies are designed from start to finish so you're taking a broader perspective and for both statistics and research methods these required courses you have dedicated graduate students to help assist you in labs, tutorials to help get involved in, in software coursework uh, every single week. So you have lots of support available to you, not only just the professor and from Taylor, but also for the grad students to help you uh, get as much out of your research experience as possible. If you really want to get excited about research uh, and you, you like what you study and what you hear from your professors, uh, you can help be either a research opportunity student, which is a student course dedicated to working with one particular professor in their laboratory, where you can help run studies yourself. And if you really want in your fourth year, we have a capstone experience, which is one-on-one -on -one research opportunities that spans the entire year with a professor and their grad students potentially. So you have like a full year project where you now get to design a research project and get to study and potentially even present that research at a local or national conference, which is very exciting uh, opportunity to get involved. So from year one to year four, you can get excited about uh, research opportunities and get involved. And what makes that unique to Lakehead is just the fact that we have these smaller course sizes, smaller classes, and an opportunity to come up to your professor, talk to them, and get involved in what they're doing. Uh, so I encourage you to look at our website and see some of the research that professors are doing, because you could be part of that team. I'll jump in uh, here, and I also want to add to uh, what you were saying. Essentially, for the fact that we are a smaller institution, uh, students have access to these research opportunities and these experiential opportunities uh, on a greater scale, essentially, because uh, they aren't reserved for upper year students, so they aren't reserved for graduate students. Um, it's great to hear, obviously, directly from our chair that uh, undergrad students are working directly with our grad students and influencing their own uh, thesis research uh, objectives and whatnot. But it's also speaking to the fact that uh, some of these are directly built into the program. So yes, you can absolutely volunteer and you can seek out additional opportunities, but some of them are actually worked right into the program. So for those students that already know coming right out of high school that their undergrad is not where they're going to stop, they intend on pursuing that master's or that doctoral level, um, you're going to want to start to get involved in these. And you can 
craft your own lakehead education to really ensure that you have the experiences that are going to build that solid foundation for when you move into further studies, which ties into our next discussion. And I'll pass back to Dr. Klein of where you could pursue those graduate programs. Absolutely. Thanks. Yeah, we pride ourselves in making sure our students do well in getting scholarships for graduate programs, also getting into the graduate programs that they would like. Uh, there's lots of different opportunities to get uh, in, involved in, in further education. The psychology degree is very flexible and, and very foundational because the skill sets that you learn. Uh, we have students that go off into a variety of different graduate programs, whether it's research uh, involved in neuroscience or other kind of psychological research, but also areas that are that are more, say, uh, expanding and growing, like sports psychology, um, particularly sometimes counseling or clinical research. Lots of opportunities to apply your psych degree to different different career paths. Uh, in particular, for uh, if you're interested in clinical psychology or, or research, we offer two programs here at Lakehead. So we have uh, two graduate programs in clinical psychology. One is the MA clinical psychology and then the PhD in clinical psychology. And these are accredited, uh, nationally recognized programs that follow a very high standard. Uh, our students do very well in getting practicum and, and internship placements and going off into the workforce. Uh, we're very proud of our clinical psychology program. We also have uh, a brand new clinic on campus where students can do a giant uh, a giant proportion of their clinical hours right here on campus, uh, being trained by some of the top clinical psychologists in the city. So we're very, very proud of this uh, particular program. The PhD program as well is a master's program about two years and the PhD program about four to five years uh, of additional study. On the other side of that, we have the research, the MSc and the PhD in psychological science. So the clinical program is for studying and treating and diagnosing uh, severe psychopathologies. Uh, the psychological science program is more about the research component of it. These are not people who are doing clinical work or counseling work, but people who are specifically studying psychology. They want to hone their skills on, on research and, and understanding in a particular area. And these individuals can go off into a variety of fields. They can go off into academia, or they become policy analysts, they can work for nonprofit organizations. But their skill sets here are basically all those research skills you picked up in your undergraduate degree to a whole new level. So they're studying uh, deeply statistics and research methodology, and then doing some other specific coursework, but mostly looking at their own research interests and doing one-on-one -on -one studies with their uh, specific supervisor that they've chosen. Uh, that's it for the graduate courses at a glance. Um, whether it's your graduate program, your undergraduate program, specifically the undergraduate program, we are really focusing on your critical thinking, your ability to create a study, understand study methodology and then to analyze your results. This is gonna help you and understand not only the material you're, you're researching, but to be a critical thinker in your own right, to have that ability to sort of um, uh, comprehend complex information, break it down, and then be able to present it to another audience in a way that makes sense to them. So all the skills that you're learning through that process, not just learning content of psychology or what different parts of the brain do, but specifically how, how that was determined. Those are the critical skills you're bringing forward into the career opportunities. So things like statistics, research methodology, these are really core, core skill sets. In addition to sort of writing student papers and presenting in class, all those are critical components, whether it's in your undergraduate degree or in your graduate degree. Those are the marketable skills that you're bringing forward. And that's why there's so many different career opportunities, whether it's in speech pathology or it's in law or it's in medicine. Those are the skills that you bring forward to you and why this degree is, is, is valued amongst many, many different occupations. If you, in addition to sort of wanting to get involved just in, in the research realm, there's sort of a broader uh, realm that you can get involved involved with this as well. Uh, we have two clubs in psychology. One is called PALS or Psychology Association of Lakehead Students. And PALS is sort of a, a, a general club that gets involved in all things psychology here on campus. So they have uh, movie nights sometimes where they basically have a thriller or an event and they can bring in psychology students, professors and grad students, and you kind of study the, the film and understand psychological elements. But 
on a more practical level, they offer mentorship opportunities. So senior graduate students and other senior students can help mentor students from their first year and second year to give them advising on, on a sort of a more student to student level. So Taylor helps with very specific kind of advising and career advising. These are students that can help you navigate your way through different programs and different courses and give you tips and tricks on how to get through it. So it's just a nice social way to get involved, uh, not in particular research, but just involved in psychology and get excited about all the different areas of psychology that are there. The second group is SciKai, and that's our honor society. So if your grades are in the top 35% of your cohort, you can get involved in SciKai, which is an international psychology club. And this is one where you can apply for scholarships and, and travel opportunities to go to conferences. And you're involved in more of a broader global group of individuals who study psychology at a high level. So you can apply into it in first and second year. And this club also puts on regular events. Like they'll bring in uh, research speakers, have research seminars, so you can get involved in research at, at a much so broader international level, which is also very exciting to get involved with uh, in your undergraduate and even in graduate years. For career opportunities, um, I can say a couple of things, uh, and then then maybe Jordan can can help expand. The career opportunities are are, are in a variety of different areas. So I would suggest we've had students go into lots of different areas, into terms of law, in terms of medicine, beyond just counseling clinical psychology. Probably one of the fastest growing areas in psychology is industrial organizational psychology, which many people are not aware of. IO psychology is business psychology, and that's things like uh, human resources, but also marketing, uh, advertising, et cetera. And that's probably one of the fastest growing fields and, and one of the most profitable in terms of salary and job opportunities. Awesome. I'll jump in here. So, of course, to our audience, by no means is, is this an exhaustive list of the career opportunities. And I think that something that uh, us as the panel would like you to gather from our information that we've shared with you today is that uh, you really get to craft your own degree here at Lake, and you can pursue the passions that you have and fill your electives accordingly, knowing what your end goal might be. And of course, we have the support and systems in place uh, that you can go and seek out if you need more clarity on, you know, if, if you have a passion maybe to become a speech pathologist, you can sit down with Taylor and you can discuss what are the electives that you might take in your humanities or social sciences or math and engineering and natural sciences courses that are going to lend their hand really well into having a strong application into those grad schools or professional programs that lead into further education and then eventually that end goal of maybe speech pathology or lawyer, uh, to, for example. But then there's other careers, of course, where you can dive headfirst into it. I've had friends, I'm a proud alumnus of Lakehead University, I studied business, so uh, psychology is not my field of study, but I have friends from psychology that uh, graduated from Lakehead, and some moved right into the workforce and, and got jobs in local uh, health units and other careers that pursued a, a non-traditional route. So, you know, you understand that psychology uh, works a lot with uh, health and behavioral sciences, um, but they are now focused more on that marketing side, as Dr. Klein discussed how that is an emerging career field for psychologists. Uh, so it's a very interesting um, topic to study, to say the least, but also uh, has a lot of opportunities and allows you to, again, craft your own degree here at Lakehead so that you can pursue the passions that you have, but also hopefully pursue the programs and electives that you're going to know uh, or that you know you will be successful in, so you have a strong application for uh, potentially furthering your education. So that does conclude our formal presentation on uh, psychology, and it's been a pleasure having our panelists. Thank you again for joining us. Next, we're going to dive into the live question and answer period, uh, so I'll meet you there. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, I want to encourage you to comment below or connect with us on social media. We can be found at Lakehead International on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Thanks for watching once again, and hopefully we'll see you at the next live webinar. Bye for now.